Hey guys, had a uh, pretty busy last couple weeks and weekends, so I thought maybe I'd catch you up on some of the things that are going on. Uh, we are in the Quell Aviary. Uh, and these are the original wicking beds that will be going down to the ground uh, at the end of this season. We've cut them off of the aquaponics. They're just straight wicking beds now, but I kind of wanted to show you like how much polyculture we have going on in just one of these Rubbermaid tubs. So right here, and it'll be another month and they'll probably all the way down here to be just like last year. It'll just be spilled over the ground and help them to feed the quail. Uh, these are the purple Japanese sweet potatoes that grow over here. Nasturtiums. I mean, just, you know, hand-sized nasturtium leaves waiting on the flowers. Peppers are starting to produce. Uh, that's a Cuban L right there. Uh, you could certainly pick it now, but I like when they get red. They taste a lot sweeter. Right now they kind of taste like banana peppers and when they get that red color they taste a lot more like a conventional pepper dill everywhere in here more nasturtium tomatoes going on back here starting to set fruit uh there's some right there these are all cherry tomatoes that i have in here the tomatoes are actually really hard to uh manage the way things are right now you see i have to squeeze in between here we did all this to make it work with the aquaponics and i've like i've said previously i've just decided to get out of that business with this particular system it's going to be much better on the ground swiss chard banging more peppers oh, that's a big one there man that sucker is heavy so uh hopefully that read up for me soon one of the things we're beginning to transition with in these beds now and you can see there's a lot less of it than the last video i did is this red amaranth is beginning to come out because it's taking up too much space and while those are about the right size for cooking um, some of the bigger pieces are getting a little bit past where they make a good braising green. That's probably about as big as you want it right there. That's a wonderful crop. Probably planted a little bit more of it than I should have. Um, and it's starting to shade out the peppers and I'm getting some legginess. You can see how leggy that pepper is. I want it to bush out more. So that'll kind of be my next project is to come through in here and do it again. I recently did, but it's, it's good because, you know, we take some of the choice stuff for ourselves to cook for greens. And then the ducks love it. So I've been feeding them a very high protein vegetable uh, supplement to their feed. Get over here. This is where we go to jalapenos here. Uh, that plant is looking good, man. Look at that. That plant has only been in this pot for about five weeks. And it was an itty bitty one like that when it went in five weeks ago. Thick, stocky stalks. Little bit leggy. Not quite as bushy as I'd like. But that's, again, because of this amaranth. But I'll tell you what, it also did this amaranth. We were getting just pounded with wind while these poor little peppers were coming up. And as the amaranth kind of grew along with them, it helped absorb that wind. You can see one of the amaranths getting spiky and putting on seed back there. A tomato almost to the roof already. Uh, that's what I'm saying. When I, when I convert this system and we go to a little jalapeno action going on already, huh? Five weeks in the container and it's got a pepper on it. When we drop these to the ground, like all of our vining crops are going to go in the back. Then they got nine feet, well, minus about two feet of height here. So they got seven feet before they hit the roof. And then we can bring them out over. It'll be a lot easier to manage. There's a little bit better of a jalapeno. Huh? Look at that one. That'll be the first one picked this year. That's how they come at first. You get a few here and there. Not really good for grilling. But boy, they're starting to set everywhere. Tomatoes here again. I believe this pepper, uh, this tomato is called Sweet Million. Yeah, that's what it is, Sweet Million. And it produces a lot. I, I don't get a long tomato season here. We have real problems with blight, even with the way I manage everything, we still get problems with blight. And having them hit the roof so quick doesn't help. Uh, so we'll be cloning and replanting. That's our way around that. Fern leaf dill, man, I love this stuff. This is like one of my favorite herbs to just munch on. More peppers. So pretty much these beds, other than changing the variety of peppers, are pretty much the same all the way down. Nasturtium, pole beans, uh, sweet potato. And it's just, you know, when you think about how much is growing, and people wonder, like, how the hell can you do this and have everything work? And it's, well, it's some level of management. We do have to, as certain things get to certain sizes, like that piece of amaranth, you know, they have to go and become, you know, bird food but the other thing is that this soil is so high quality because we're managing it you know almost by the square inch at this point look we got uh i can't remember alyssum sweet alyssum coming in as a carpet 
little pretty flowers. That's going to bring in lots of pollinators. Down here, these are uh, scarlet runner beans. So one of my, you know, like I said, some of my next tasks, I got to get in and really rip out almost all this amaranth. And I won't rip it out. I'm going to do more of what I'm doing here, cutting it. That leaves the roots behind and lets them rot in the soil and feeds the soil organisms. Because we're managing this just like it's in the ground. We're just actually doing it way more intensively. Little bell pepper there. Another bell pepper, look at that. Yeah. Uh, I'm almost ready to eat that one. More tomatoes setting. You know, this is just eight little beds here. Massive amount of production. I got stuff going on other way, other places that I guess I'll show you in another video maybe tomorrow because I'm only gonna spend so much time today And then these beds These have been here about three weeks, I guess and just tons of the uh, Hobie red dye amaranth and so since we're coming out of the ability to have this in these beds now we're successing over to here mm. uh, Toss the ground nut in there Apis Americana. You should see how it would do. It looks like it's doing pretty good. Um, this is radish. These are um, a really cool green Asian radish I've never grown before. You just wanted to see how they came out. I'm not really a radish fan, but you never know until you try. I got some squash, cucumbers, cucumber back there, watermelon. This is, uh, I don't remember exactly what the name of it is, but it's a really small watermelon. They grow like you hold them in your hand. And what I do is I train them up here, and then you don't get any of that rot on the bottom side of them. Uh, cucumber in the back. Some sort of squash. You don't remember what it was. Okra. Burgundy okra. Yes, I'm growing okra in a container. Why? Because I can. And then that's what happened this weekend. Two brand new beds. And when I planted these, I didn't carpet them with the red amaranth. I carpeted them with uh, arugula. Long-term understory. Got some really cool Asian cucumber seed planted back there. They'll crawl up. Cantaloupe. These are pretty much two mirror beds. Two different varieties of cantaloupe, but cantaloupe's there. The cantaloupe's, again, will we'll train them up and down that way. Giant Marconi pepper. This is a pepper called Red Lunchbox because it basically makes these little red peppers. They look like little jalapenos, but they're sweet. And then Ishiban um, eggplant. So there's Asian eggplant. My granddaughter's over there. She's pretty excited about things. Same thing here. So these got built this weekend. Actually, yesterday is when I really got to build them. And uh, you can see they're now full with water. And there's the standard wicking bed filled through the tube back there. Now, when I filled them yesterday, I filled them until they were overflowing. Came out this morning, they were down about that much. That one over there, it's rained quite a bit recently. It's full to the top, hasn't been filled up in days, and it has not gone down hardly at all. Why? Well, that's an established bed. It's well primed. Everything's ready to go. And uh, so it's got lots of moisture in it. This was a brand new bed. So when I put all that moisture down there in the bottom, it did exactly what it was supposed to, wicked it up. So it had to, it had to hydrate fully. Then I came in and gave it a good watering. Um, right behind it so yeah and did that with the top water a couple people have asked about that that if um if you're planting seed you know how do you deal with the surface uh until they get roost down and you just water from the top we can automate that with sprinklers i just use i'll show you here where did i set it ah i took it off the floor. oh here we go i just use one of these nice and gentle now you can get the ones that have all the different patterns if you want, but the reason I have these is for that gentle kind of rain pattern. So uh, anyway, that's that's where we're at. Thought maybe you'd like to see what's going on in here. And again, the polyculture is kind of insane. And the results speak for themselves, for those that still doubt the power of the wicking bed. Really does work. We'll catch up with you later.